Hi guys, today I'm going to show you what I did to fix an idling problem on my Lexus that, that caused some check engine codes to show up. And I found out in the process that this is a very common problem. And what I have is a electronically controlled throttle body, which um, is not the easiest thing in the world to clean because if you screw up, you could, um, you could break it. And on my car, which is a 2006 Lexus GS300, the replacement model cost about $700. So I took great care in uh, cleaning mine and I recorded the whole process. And once I cleaned everything, it actually did fix my problem, okay. which was, <laughs> that was the best part, obviously. So let me walk you through exactly what I did now, um, like I said, this was on my car, but you could do this on any modern car or any car with a throttle body because the instructions are basically going to be um, almost identical on your car. You're, you're going to have to take some covers off. You're going to have to um, take certain precautions and, you know, you're going to have to use pretty much the same solutions. Okay, step one, you have to disconnect the negative battery terminal Whoa. on your car. According to the instructions, we wait 15 minutes and then we could unhook the throttle body. This thing has a motor and apparently with the battery plugged in, it could do some kind of sweeps on this according to some car manufacturers. So you want to hook the battery, you make sure everything dies out, 15 minutes, and then we're going to remove the throttle body and clean it from uh, this side and the other side. Now, to clean your throttle body, first you have to expose the air intake system. On my 06 GS300, I have to remove all the plastic covers, including the engine cover. Okay, the instructions actually tell you to remove the entire air box assembly. Um, I didn't do that. I just removed this large um, rubber hose that's connected to the air box. So what you have to do is basically disconnect a bunch of um, hoses that are connected to that rubber air hose and the mass air sensor connector. Unfortunately, I don't have footage of that because I wasn't planning on making a YouTube video until I was ready past this process. Uh, I wasn't having a good day that day, so I was like, screw it, I'm just going to get this done because I was tired of my car vibrating, um, you know, with the AC on it, it would just have this crazy vibration where the car almost shut off on me and then the check engine light would go on. So I just wanted to fix the problem, had no intention on taping a video, but um, after I did after I removed all the covers and the air holes, I said, you know what? Let me just videotape the footage and maybe I'll make a video out of it one day. So, so uh, what you're looking at right here is me putting everything back together. This is not the video of me taking it apart, but it's pretty self-explanatory. Just take a look at it, slowly start disconnecting everything from that air hose. And I was able to wiggle out that air hose by pulling it off the throttle body and then out of the air box once everything else was disconnected if you're having problems wiggling it loose um you know just take off the air box and that's pretty much it with that process i have two sets of pliers because i have to plug up the water connection right here and another one right here a little bit of uh, radiator fluid can come out and before we begin Make sure your battery has been disconnected for at least 15 minutes. All we need is a 10 millimeter. Oh. 
a long bolt. Now I changed one of these on my Mustang. It was uh, a lot simpler because it didn't have any water connections. Behind the throttle body is going to be a gasket. You might have to clean it. I doubt we have to change it. Okay. So that's number four. All right. Now. Now I'm going to see if I can get you a better camera angle, but basically I have to disconnect this connection, this connection, and this. Okay, so you have to press down on both ends and kind of wiggle it loose. I got to tell you, it was a bitch. So now we have these poses. So here I'm just going to use some vice grips. Okay, whoops. <laughs> so a little bit of radiator fluid came out. So we gotta disconnect the holes in back. Okay. And here we might get some dripping. So let me get something ready. I'm gonna try to shove thickest one in. I don't know if it's gonna work. If not, I'll just use my pliers. Rolling it. I'm gonna cap it with my thumb real quick. Okay. So the throttle body is disconnected. Actually not much came out. Oh and that's definitely too loose. So that's not gonna work. Uh let's try mini pliers. That works. Okay. And here's the gasket. That also doesn't look great. So finally, let's take a look at this. It it's definitely really dirty. And let's look at the other side. Yeah. I've seen worse, but it definitely needs a cleaning. Now this is a electronic throttle body and if you had this plugged in and you moved the door actually this door doesn't even want to budge. Now I'm not going to force it. First I'm going to clean it with the fluid and see if just cleaning it loosens it. Because uh, I do want to put it open. I want to, um, wow well, look at that. Look at that, that's disgusting. So, we'll see. You don't want to force the butterfly valve. If, if tapping it, if I can't get it open, I might just put it back after doing a proper cleaning front and back because I don't want to break this motor. This is like a thousand dollar part. Alright, some people use throttle body cleaner. So I bought that. Some people use brake cleaner, but um, I heard you should not use this. I also heard that this could damage some throttle bodies that have a special coating. I uh, didn't find that Lexus has a special coating. But anyways, apparently the safest thing to use is fuel injection cleaner. So I'm going to use it on the rag, and I also got a toothbrush. So... This is the back side. Ah, I knew to do the front side. Okay. I'm gonna let that soak in a little bit. 
Let's see. You see how it's dripping through? That's basically because it's not sealing perfectly because of all the crud. I don't know. I might actually need a fuel injection cleaner. I mean, I might actually have to use this. I got a bag and some paper towels. Let's just soak this up and see what we got here. Hmm. No. I would say that is not the best job. To clean it that well. I mean, it definitely did something, but I would not consider that super clean. I mean, some people even use gasoline. So I'm going to dry it right now. Okay, you can open it, just very gently, and you can hear the gears moving, so you definitely don't want to mess this up. Okay. I'm actually pushing from the back on the opposite side. I don't want to mess up this motor, but yeah, I'm just going to use the throttle body cleaner. That didn't work well at all. Okay. Okay. I have to part in the motorcycle outside, but... <laughs> I just found out the hard way that you better get some eye protection for this because with the nozzle I don't really even need the nozzle I'm gonna take that off I, want, I just want to get into the corners with it but basically I sprayed myself in the face so yeah okay oh wow holy crap it ate through the styrofoam. Holy shit. Alright. I need... Wow. I need uh, some cardboard instead. Okay. So let me take this off. I have to open my garage. It's way too stinky.
See that gap? See my finger there? It's not seated properly. I mean, basically, I'm going to keep spraying it front and back until I can get it clean properly. <laughs> Once I get the walls clean, and the edges, I'm going to open the butterfly valve and clean the passage that's exposed when the butterfly is open. Don't want to get this stuff on your fingers, so make sure you wear gloves. All right, guys, the throttle body is clean, and I notice it's not in the resting position. So hopefully the computer will calibrate that. As you can see, there's a gap. They could push close. So we'll see. But I got it clean as good as I can. And then I wiped it dry with a paper towel. All right guys, I have some throttle body cleaner on this rag. Um, I don't want to pull this gasket off in case I break it. So I'm just gonna dab with the throttle body cleaner. And just try to get the surface gunk off. The gasket doesn't look bad, so I didn't, and I don't have another one on hand, so I'm not gonna, you know, take it off in case I rip it. Cause that would be a bad thing, and then I'll have to wait before I could start driving my car again. So this is what the gasket looks like after I wiped it. Now. You know, when you look in there, I definitely see some grease in the intake. So maybe that would be another video, cleaning the intake. But for now, I'm just going to mount the throttle body. All right, now it's time to put back everything the way it was. Um, you could take pictures during your throttle body cleaning process, so you could make sure you put back every connection. Um, but it's pretty self-explanatory. You'll see all the hoses, they'll be loose, and you just got to connect everything, tighten all the screws, and you'll be all set. So now I have a couple clips of what happened after I started my car the first time, after I let it run for a little bit, and after I took it for a shakedown run. So let's take a look at those, and that'll be it. All right, so it's going to be first time starting a car. Let me open a garage. After the battery has been reset. And that's normal. Okay, we're gonna let it adjust. I'm actually going to I'm going to put outside to idle. So 917, I'm going to let it idle like this and relearn how to idle. Alright, so it's been about 9 minutes and I'm going to take the car for a little drive. The RPMs now are around 1000. 
I think it was about 1300 before but it's it's not shaking it's running very smooth so we'll just take it for a drive all right guys I am at a stop sign and you can't see because it's night but anyways I'm on a shakedown run and the car is idling above 500 rpm and before it wouldn't do that so super happy that that throttle body cleaning fixed the uh, low idle problem and the rough idle problem